Okay, welcome to 1.5 projectile motion. Now, projectile motion you probably looked at in grade 11, but we're going to be taking what you learned and then extending a bit, it a bit to a few new ideas. So again, projectile motion, it's motion that looks like these, where you've got some sort of ball moving, it's, it's falling with gravity as it moves horizontally. That's what we're talking about. So, a few definitions here. A projectile is an object... Um, sorry, let me just move that over. An object launched through the air So it's an object launched through the air, and it falls to the ground in a parabolic arc. By parabolic arc, I mean it's, it follows the shape of a parabola, which is the shape of x squared. Okay, and there's a few terms here. Range. Range is the horizontal displacement. So range is just the name we give to horizontal displacement, and it looks like this, x displacement. So for projectile motion, a few interesting things happen. The horizontal velocity is constant. And another way of writing that is we can say the acceleration in the x-dimension is zero. The vertical acceleration is constant. So the horizontal velocity is constant. The vertical acceleration is constant. So we can say that acceleration in the y-dimension is equal to g g being 9.8 meters per second squared, and it's important that for these we solve for x and y separately. That's what makes these problems possible, is we solve x and y separately. And the one interesting thing is they both share the same value for delta t. Whatever you calculate for the x motion is going to be the same amount of time as for the y motion. Okay, so here we have a few pictures of projectile motion. You can see that they all sort of follow this parabola. That's because they're all undergoing uniform acceleration in the y dimension and no acceleration in the x. Okay. So one of the important ideas here is that these objects can have an initial velocity, and that initial velocity could be in two dimensions. It could have an x component and a y component. So you can see that this baseball here starts with this initial velocity. And we need to be able to break that up, we've got another initial velocity here, into the x component and the y component. And you can see there are the equations, vix and viy. So vix is equal to vi cos theta and vi y is equal to vi sine theta. Now notice this is only true if the angle is given relative to the ground. If I had instead an angle written like this, then it would be a whole different story. It would be the opposite. But in this case, we're dealing with the horizontal angle. Okay, a couple um, comments about what's happening in this projectile motion. So for our horizontal motion, we have constant velocity. For vertical motion, we have constant acceleration. Our equations for horizontal motion, we have vi x is equal to vi cos theta. And 
delta dx, which is our range, is equal to vix times delta t. So however fast we're going horizontally, we just multiply that by our time. That's how far we're going to move horizontally. Hopefully that's straightforward. For vertical motion, it's a bit different. We can say that viy is equal to vi sine theta. We have delta dy is equal to viy delta t minus one half g delta t squared. That's basically just one of our equations of motion where we've sub substituted negative g for a for the acceleration. We have vfy is equal to viy minus g delta t. Again, that's just one of our kinematics equations. And one last e equation here, vfy squared is equal to viy squared minus 2g delta dy. Okay, so there's a few more equations we need to deal with in our vertical motion. Let's take a look at a problem. It says, an airplane pilot drops a package of supplies to a motorist as he flies horizontally at a height of 350 meters over the highway. The speed of the airplane is a constant 52 meters per second. So the airplane is going here 52 meters per second. And delta dy here is 350 meters. The figure below shows the package A as it leaves the airplane, B in mid-drop, and C when it lands on the highway. So you can see that at each point it's lined up in the same position with the airplane. And that's an important idea that it's horizontally it is moving the same speed as the airplane is. Okay, so we want to calculate how long it takes for the package to reach the highway. Well, um, for that part, we, it really just depends on the vertical motion. We don't care so much about the horizontal motion here. So, we'll set up our information. We're given that the y displacement is down 350 meters. So the package is going to move downwards 350 meters. The x velocity, which I don't think we're going to use for this part of the problem, but that's our x velocity g is equal to um, 9.8 meters per second squared and we have viy so the initial y velocity is zero it's starting off not moving those are our given pieces of information we're required to find delta t So we're just going to focus on the y dimension here. So we have delta dy, g, viy, delta t. Our equation, viy delta t minus one half g delta t squared. And we can solve this now. Well, if we look at this, viy was zero. So this becomes zero, that whole term disappears. So now I just have negative one half, and I can fill in my, uh, well, negative one half g delta t squared. I want to rearrange this for delta t. So delta t is equal to the square root of negative two delta dy over g. And now I can fill in some values here. So I get the square root of negative 2 times negative 350 over 9.8. And this gives me 8.5 seconds. That's my elapsed time. So that's you know, straightforward, I hope. That's how we solve this sort of a problem. We're just focusing, in this case, on y. Now we want to determine the range. Well, now we're just focusing on x. I don't need to list all my given values again. I already listed them up here. So I'm just going to write down my required. Now I want to find my range, delta dx. 
equation is like this. So the x velocity times the elapsed time. And now I can solve this. I know that I'm moving 52 meters per second horizontally, and the time was 8.45 seconds. I've kept an extra digit from above. Above I just wrote my final answer, but the extra digit said 8.45. So I get 439 meters, and I want to use my correct sig figs, so I get 440 meters. There's my final answer. And notice that I haven't really been putting a final therefore statement. That's just for sake of time, but on a, on a test or that sort of thing, I do expect that you put a therefore statement at the end of your problem. Okay, so that is doing projectile motion in the sort of standard way. That's all things that you saw last year. Now the new bit here is using the range equation. So the range equation looks like this. It's to find specifically the range, so delta dx. And it equals this, vi squared over g times sine 2 theta. The sine of 2 theta. Sorry, I'm just going to... Okay, that looks good. Sine of 2 theta. Okay, so that's delta dx, that is our range, and this is useful. Actually, I'm not going to say it's useful, I'm going to say you can only use this, only use this when delta dy equals zero. You can only use it when delta dy equals zero. If it's not, so in the picture to the right here, you see that we start and end at the same vertical location, so we can use the range equation. If that's not true, you can't use the range equation. Okay. But it is useful in those uh, scenarios. And it's useful because we only need to know vi and theta which is pretty uh, wonderful. We, that's all we need to know in the problem. So we can find the range. We can also find the elapsed time using this uh, equation. Delta t, this is a related equation, equals 2 vi sine theta divided by g. Okay, so um, using these equations, you can see that if our range is this up here, vi squared over g sine 2 theta. Well, the maximum of, of the sine function is 1. So that means the maximum range we can get here is this. If sine 2 theta ends up being less, if it ends up being 0 0.7 or whatever it happens to be, then you can see that our range would go down. But the maximum we can get is vi squared over g. So the maximum range is vi squared over g. And this happens when what well happens when sine 2 theta is equal to 1 so that means that this is when theta is equal to 45 degrees because if you think of sine 2 theta well the sine of 90 degrees is 1 so 2 theta has to be 90 theta has to be 45 degrees. So that means that you get the maximum range always. You get the maximum range when you launch at 45 degrees. If you may aim more upwards, you lose range. If you aim more downwards, you lose range. Now that's assuming there's no air resistance or anything like that. So that's our last comment here. Air resistance we assume it is zero. Sorry, I'll just write my zero this way. We assume it is zero. 
All right, last page here, we're going to do an example with the range equation. Suppose you kick a soccer ball at 28 meters per second towards the goal at a launch angle of 21 degrees. Okay, and so then it says, how long does the soccer ball stay in the air? We have our equation. We just go on to the previous page. We say delta t equals 2vi sine theta over g. We use that equation. Delta t equals 2vi sine theta over g. And we can put in our values here. So 2 times 28 times sine of 21 degrees over 9.8. This gives us a value of 2.0 seconds. Now, we want to always make sure with our range equation that we're dealing with a situation where delta dy is zero. So I'm kicking the soccer ball, goes up, it lands back down on the ground at the same height. Delta dy equals zero, so we're good to go. We can use our range equation. Okay, so we've got our delta t, and now determine the distance the soccer ball would need to score to cover to score a goal. That is the range. Delta dx is equal to vi squared over g sine 2 theta. And yes, you can just use the equation exactly like this as long as you're sure that it applies in this problem. So um, I can plug in my values here. We have 28 squared over 9.8 times sine of 2 times 21. This gives us a value of 53 meters. And there we go. So that's using the range equation. The very last piece here is a problem about a golfer. It says a golfer hits a golf ball with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. The golfer is at an initial height of 14 meters above the point where the ball lands. So if I draw this problem here, our golfer is up here. Here's our golfer. And the golf ball goes up like this and back down. And it says that the ball lands 14 meters below where it starts. I'm going to leave this problem for you to solve. I want you to remember, can you use the, um, the range equation? Can you use, um, does it have the uh, d zero of delta dy? So think about that, see what you can use. I will give you a hint about maximum height, okay? Maximum height is going to be here, and that's where the ball stops going upwards and starts going downwards. So that means that at that point, at the maximum height, Vfy is equal to zero meters per second because it's where the ball turns direction and starts heading back downwards. That should be enough, um, enough information to solve that problem. Part B, determine the ball's velocity. You're going to need to find the x and y velocity. Remember, v is going to be equal to, so vf is going to be equal to vfx plus vfy. You can give that problem a try on your own, and I will see you in the next lesson.